Um, it's getting there. Did we miss a week or did we miss two weeks? I'm trying to think now. We might have missed two weeks. But I hope everybody's well. And the big news is I am chatting to you from my new home, my new mobile home. I've moved in. Um, it looks great. It is great. doesn't just look great. There's herself. She's been running around all day. She's like <laughs> stretched out on the seat. And I'm not going to show you around yet until I have it done up right and everything. I mean, I'm just, it's just been a few nights I've been here in a few days. But it really is fantastic. And a thank you to everybody who gave to the Go GoFundMe campaign last December. God, and to Jessica, my friend, who started the ball rolling as well. Um... It did take a long time. I mean, there was, I wanted to get planning for a new house. So if I was able to afford it, that was there. And I did in a workshop. And once I had that, I was able then to bring the mobile home down from Milltown. Um, but then I had to figure out where to put it. So then I had to get a road made and a platform made to put the mobile home. And when that was done, then... I had to find somebody who would bring the mobile home down. And I found someone, and God bless him, he was a no, an older man. It wasn't his first rodeo. And he then, if it was a guy of 20, or, you know, a young fellow who was trying to prove himself, he would have gone down every road and, and backed in every which way. It was This older guy was a bit more like, oh, no, she won't go down there. And so somebody dropped her in kind of just over a few yards, I suppose, a few hundred yards, um, then off the road. But then I'd get somebody, because the this platform was made so that the lorry would just back up and it would just um, offload the, the mobile home onto the platform, but your man wasn't doing that. So then that had to just... You know, I, I have figured out life is like a video game. You know, you go through one level and you get one thing sorted and then there's another problem. New problems, new um, things to, to get through. I can open a window. But then I was trying to get somebody to move it. So this person was busy. That person was busy. This person was very busy. That person said give them two weeks. But then after the two weeks, they were still very busy. And eventually... A perfect person, Michael Shea, Mike, uh, Michael Shea in Port McGee, he, um, he did it in one day. I asked him on a Friday, he had it done Monday evening, which was fantastic. And that was last Monday evening. So I've been kind of m moving in slowly and surely. It's great. It's bright. It's clean. It's, it's new. And it is fantastic. It's quite big. I mean, there's a kitchen down there and there's more bedrooms. But as I say, I'll give you all that kind of a tour when I have it more set up. But it's great. And I am here now. And it's it's just brilliant. Uh, yeah, it took a while. I mean, part of me was kind of tempted to do the whole what's going on with the mobile home now What's going on with the mobile home now? What went down with the mobile home back then? We're waiting. And you see, I've, I'm very aware that people see the world now like, um, what is it? Reality TV. And reality TV is very clever. And what people forget is that it is scripted, it is edited, it is produced, and it is directed. You kind of think it's off the cuff, but it's not. So, I mean, they could be, they could easily put six months of waiting into the first half, 15 minutes of, a, of an episode, and then maybe a month of doing into the second part of the episode. And you have your ups and your downs and everything there. And it's made to be quite... Con um, Oh, I know. And she's sound asleep, Suzanne. Did you see her? She is just, she had a big day, a big play day today. <laughs> there are some um, anti grover covers on the cushions. So, But she's doing great. She loves it. 
and she comes out here to sleep at night. So what I have to do is figure out somewhere for Grover to be when I'm not here. She's going up to the old house at the moment when I'm not here because I think it's just, it's too... Now, that's a question. Do I trust her or not? I don't yet. If somebody rapped at the window, she could go crazy and start ripping things around the place. And she is very good now, I must admit, up in the house. But I think she'd be better off just to have her own little spot. And she'd be here with me by night and everything like that. It's not that she's I'm trying her out. It's just it'd be great if she had her own little place when I'm not here. But, um, yeah, the reality TV... So... Like, if I came to you every week with a half an hour of, yeah, it's not done yet, and it's not done yet, and that gets very boring because, as I say, reality TV is made to look as if it's off the cuff and it's just happening, but it's directed, it's produced, it's edited, it's entertaining. They make sure they want people to watch it. And I, I do see people on Facebook there who are kind of... Yeah, this is going to happen in 10 weeks. Yeah, it's going to happen in nine weeks. It's going to happen in eight weeks. It's going to happen in... And it's like, oh, please, do you know, just condense it. When is it happening? What's going on? So I think it is better to um to do it that way rather than... I think you would be just very bored with the waiting. So I'm here. I'm in for the winter. There's a few more bits now. The electricity and the water is on the next level of things. We'll see how that goes. I want to build a roof over this, a secondary roof and maybe a, a wall at the at the back. I'm not too sure how or what. Not have it all dark, like not have it in the shed, but like, like a bus shelter more than anything. I think that would really um make it safer and make it uh, warmer and drier as well. Just Just to have that kind of, extra covering you know and there's a few bits to do inside and as i say the water and the electricity but i'm here and you don't have to worry about me for the winter which is fantastic and i don't have to worry about myself for the winter which is great and it is lovely it's still very weird a because i've moved i'm now living and living in my dream spot that I've always wanted to live in. So that's a real, ah, um, uh, you know. Do you know the way, like, you know, it's, it's like your dreams come true and your wishes come true. And it is, I mean, it's amazing. Only last night I was just standing outside um, thinking this time last year. I was, I had the goats. I've since made the shed I have started the GoFundMe for the mobile home I've put in for planning wired up another field been on <laughs> been on the nine o'clock news gathered more and more friends that can delight in the joy I have of nature and my heritage and stuff which is which is so lovely um Got the planning, got the mobile home, got the road in, have moved in, been on morning television, uh, had Queen Puck, still gathering more and more lovely people to join me in the mornings and, and the goats are doing so well and all the little babies. So it's been a fantastic year, you know, and I'm truly grateful Um just the way things have kept spinning and spinning around and uh, moving forward, you know, which is great. Now as well, of course, I have no electricity, but my sisters were very good to me. My sisters bought me a beautiful purple kettle, a red frying pan, a red teapot, a few more bits and some LED lights as well. And this is, for the last couple of evenings, it's been getting darker. It's been getting, closing in a little bit more. So I wonder... There we go. And you see as well, with the with the mobile home, it's um, smaller and brighter. So the lights are able to reflect a lot better, you know. So we'll have a... Whoa. Good girl, Grover. Say hello to everybody. Oh, she's sound. Sound to the world. 
So I got these solar lights as well, and I'm not too sure. And as well, I'm kind of... No, it's like, oh, for God's sake, you're as petty, Sean Larry. But it's kind of interesting as well now because I'm, I'm, I mean, I know it's very much like sleeping upstairs. The ground in the mobile home. So how's that now? And you can see... Do you know, it's quite bright. I can read now, which is which is probably one of the greatest things. That was the hardest thing of living without electricity. Um, I still am living without electricity, but living kind of by candlelight. Um, uh, there was no, no way I could read. You know, and I think the house above was just getting darker and grimier and, and kind of closing in. It really does need a lot of work. And... Whoever buys it will have a fantastic time doing it up and a fantastic life there. But uh, this is the spot for me now. And it is amazing just standing out there last night thinking this was just a field. And so much has happened since I was standing there last night. So it is fantastic to have moved in. Very exciting. I also put up the storytelling workshops uh, for Halloween. Um, we'll see how it goes. Nobody's bitten yet, but it's early days. Please do share them. I'm going to do it as a, a Facebook event as well. I'm learning, learning, learning social media all the time, and we will get there. And there is something exciting happening for Halloween, but I do need to organise it a little bit more as well. And it's 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 really nice and something you can get involved in as well, which is really good, you know. So, my story is still in those fairy story books, and I've, I've a lot of, um, I've a lovely project coming up with three local schools, and it's all about Sean O'Connell, our Loki, Loki, our local storyteller, and his stories, and it's great because my job is, oh, thank you so much, Les, Liz, thank you so much, it's so lovely to be here, and it's a great, it's a great little spot. And um and it's do you know what's great as well? It's um how would I say I'm welcoming, I want to welcome people in for tea and I two people here yesterday morning for a coffee morning, except Grover nearly stole the show. It was all about the Grover show. But um it's it's great to have that that you know that that kind of liveliness and wanting people to call and stuff like that so it is good and halloween oh yeah the project then i'm doing with stories and stories of sean o'connell big shishin on a similar fad that'll be very exciting there's a lot of projects coming up actually and work which is great because as i say electricity and water that's going to be about six grand to um to get connected because by the time you have electricians and plumbers paid and to sign up, but then they're signed up for the, the new house whenever that happens um, as well. So it's, it's uh, we'll get there, we'll get there. But as I say, it's just so nice and comfortable. I have gas for the cooking and the cup of tea and it really makes a difference. It is so lovely. So the story, today's story, as I say, is still all about the fairies and fairy doctors and the cures. And it is said that like a lot of people had. Um, ah, definitely, Suzanne, that is that would be so lovely. It'd be so lovely to see you now. And now I can have you here. Um, if that sounds. <laughs> I can welcome you here, do you know, which is lovely. And look at herself now. Look at that for. for. <laughs> I'll have to get some nice cushions for her, I think. She's great. And yeah, the fairies, the, like a lot of people would have cures from the fairies. And there was a woman over the road from us who was said to have the cure for ringworm. And um, again, that kind of came magically and stuff like that. And there was something about throwing the cure away, that nobody would take the cure from her. Because there was kind of an idea as well that if you were curing people... Um, 
you might pay the price yourself at the end or your children might pay the price at the end. If you're using this magic to cure people, there was a kind of an idea about that as well. There was a kind of a pishog about that, that you're kind of um, taking the badness off people, but it would leave some sort of a residue on yourself or your family or something like that. And I remember as well two brothers I heard of up the country that had the cure for psoriasis because I had very bad psoriasis. And I remember somebody telling me they had been up there and it was kind of a green, a green gunk in the in bottles. And they had to rub this on and the brothers would make it up and it was supposed to be very, very good. Now, if people have noticed, I have done a little bit of shaving, a little bit of clearing of the growth as well. <laughs> That's what light will do for you. It is unknown how I'll finish. But uh, yeah, I did a bit of clearing up there because it was getting very wild and I won't be in Tralee for a while I'd say to get it um clipped up right but yeah I did a little bit I might do a little bit more but then it's like the legs of the chair you do one bit and then you have to go another bit and then you have to go another bit and there'll be nothing left so anyway this story is about a man called Morris Griffin and Morris Griffin um was a cowherd and he looked after cows for a big farmer and plenty of cows there to look after him and everything. And when he went out in the morning to bring in the cows, he saw this kind of white cloud coming down from the sky. And it just kind of landed on a little hillock over there. And it was just pure white foam, as white as linen, he said. And one of the cows went over, the grey cow went over, and she started licking the foam and she didn't stop till she'd all the foam consumed. So he didn't know what to think of this. So he brought the cows into the field or into the shed anyway. And he told the farmer about this, that he saw the, the cloud coming down from the sky and it turned into the foam and the grey cow licked it. And the farmer said to the milking maid now, he said, milk the grey cow last and make sure you bring her milk to me. Don't let anybody else touch it. Don't spill a drop put all her milk in the one bucket and bring it to me. So the maid said, fine. And Morris went out as well and he'd bring in the cows with her and he'd be holding the cows and that'd be fine out. So he was working away and he came to the grey cow and he was holding the grey cow and the milking maid was milking and God bless the cow. She had a lot more milk this evening than she had this morning than she had before. So the maid was trying to keep all the milk in the one bucket like the farmer said but it was filling up and it was filling up. And she said, come over, Morris, and take a big drink of this here. And he took a big slug out of the bucket. And she was milky away and milky away. And she was filling up and filling up. She said, Jesus, Morris, you'll have to come again because I, I want to keep all the milk in the one bucket. So I have another drink. So he had another fine drink. And she was milky away. So she had her milk, her bucket full of the milk. And when she was finished, Morris was full of milk as well. So she brought in the bucket of the grey cow to the farmer. And she said, there you go. This is all her milk in the one bucket. And he said, you didn't let any of the milk go or spill or did it go anywhere? And she said, well, look, to be honest, she had a load of milk. I didn't know what to do. So I got Morris to drink the excess. Mm, he said, look, he has the power now. He has the secret, but it was meant for him. You see, the farmer knew whatever that came down, that foam there, there was a talent in it or something. And... The person that drank the milk of the cow then would have it. But it worked out anyway that Morris had the, the gift and it was the gift of foretelling and the gift of curing. So he was able to tell what would happen in the future and he was able to cure people as well of different ailments and different diseases. And of course, people would be calling. Word got out that this fella had the cure for anything and he could foretell the future. And people were calling and he didn't ask for any money, but a few of them would give him whatever money they could or they'd give him something anyway. And that was all right, but the priest heard about it. And the priest was very upset about this. He said, inside in my parish, hmm, we can't have this going on. So he went off to have a word with Morris anyway. And he said, you can't be going around saying that you can foretell the future and you can foretell the past and you can cure people because this is not going to happen in my parish. And Morris said, but I can tell the past and I can tell the future and I can cure people. 
And probably what's wrong with you is that you can cure people or you can tell the future or the past. And I heard you have great power, but not as much as I have. And the priest was cross with this. And he said, now, tell me when the, when the last full, when the last new moon was. And Morris closed his eyes and he had a little think. And he said, you wear a stone around your neck that you got from the Pope. And it sheds three tears every time there's a new moon. And that new moon was last Tuesday night when you were crossing the river at Enagar. And the horse put his one leg in. Exactly that time he had his right foot in the water when the three tears were shed from that stone around your neck. Well, the priest said, that's exactly right. He said, I'll leave you alone. I won't. I'll leave you alone now. You can do what you want. But we'll have, I'll have nothing to do with you and you have nothing got to do with me. Ah, oh, hiya, Jane. Thank you so much. It is. It's lovely. And we'll get a bit of, we'll get the, I want somebody to look. I have a little gas heater here as well. And we'll get that up and running. I don't want to try that until I get a professional to have a look at it before we be all thrown up in the air. But the priest said anyway, you work away and I, you keep away from me and I'll keep away from you. And this went on for several years and Morris was doing great work and the farmer became to like him a lot because Morris was around the house and people were calling, curing and everything like that. And the farmer had a daughter and the daughter was married, was mad, was mad about Morris as well. So they got married and he inherited the farm then. And he was a great farmer and a great man to work for. And he still did the curing and the foretelling and everything like that was going on, which was fine. And... As he got older then, he had two sons. And the oldest son was the son that was to get the gift of curing and the gift of foretelling. And Dearmouth was his name. So anyway, as time went on, um, Morris was, was, Morris was um, training up Dearmouth for all this. And there was a crowd going to Cork and anyway to sell butter and Dearmouth wanted to go with them. There'd be great crack, you see, on the road and there'd be great crack when they sell the butter and everything like that. And Mara said to Morris to, to please not to go. Don't go because something could happen to me and I need you here to hand over the cures, the cure and the foretelling. And Mara said, or uh, Dearman said, I don't know, I'll be back again and sure nothing will happen to you. And Morris was saying, please don't go, Dearman, now please stay. But Dearman would have none of it. He went off to Cork and the second son, John, was there. And Sir Dermot said, if anything goes wrong, John is there, he'll look after you. And that was all right. And of course, the minute Dermot was gone and he headed up the road and headed out the road for Cork, didn't Morris get sick? And he got very sick and he was looking for Dermot and they sent off messengers to find him. They couldn't find him. He was on his way to Cork. And John said, but sure, can't you give me the gifts anyway, Dad, of, of foretelling and the, the cure? And the father said, Morris said, look, I can only give you them the one for curing people. I can give you the gift for foretelling. That has to go to the oldest son, but the curing can go to anyone. And John said, well, I'm not going to take the curing one because all I'll be doing all my life is having people hanging off me looking to be cured. Whereas if I had the foretelling, I could see into the future and I'd have more of a fortune. That's the kind of fella he was, really. You'll say. Anyway, the Morris was very sick in the bed and he said, look, get your mother. I'll give her the, the gift of the curing. I can give that to anyone, but I can't even give her the gift of foretelling. That should be going to Dermot if he was here. So he told his wife anyway to kill a sheep and to dress one of the legs, to get one of the legs ready in the oven, the right, the front, right front leg. Is that my left? <laughs> it is my the right front leg and um and they ate it together the wife ate it and D and Morris ate it and they cleaned it all off and he handed the bone to her and he said now you keep that bone and when anybody needs a cure or asks you to cure someone you look into the bone you keep staring at the bone and you'll see what's wrong with them and what will cure them and that was all right anyway. And poor Morris died and the wife had the bone. 
And Dermot came home from Cork, of course, and he was all excited, but there was no father around. And he said, where's dad? And they told him he has died and he was buried and they couldn't find him anywhere, so they just buried him. And he said, what about the, the gifts? Did he give the gifts to you, John? And John said, well, look, he couldn't give me the gift of foretelling, but he could give me the gift of curing. But there's no point in me wandering around and people after me trying to cure them if I don't have the full, the full bargain, the foretelling and seeing into the past and stuff. That's where the crack is. So the, the, um, the mother had them, the curing anyway, and eventually she died and the sons moved on and they never had any more of the gifts of the curing or the foretelling. It is. But it is interesting. It is an interesting story. And uh, I love the way that the start, the um, the farmer was trying to get the, the gifts off the cow, the, the milk of the cow. And it's a bit like the salmon of knowledge. The same kind of an idea, but the idea that the, the cow and the milk of the cow was precious and had the gift in it. And uh, it is, it's a nice story. I do like um, these stories. Again, what I'll probably try and do is I'd work on that story to make it a little bit more, I don't want to say entertaining, relevant, I suppose, to make it a bit more relevant and to put something. These are stories I've just read. And what I would do then, you see, it's great actually having this, but when you have a live audience and you're telling the story, you, you your, your brain is so under pressure and you have people in front of you that you're, um, you come up with amazing ideas. You're just creativity under pressure, really. And um, that is good. So I, I look forward to that again. So that's it. It's not yarn from the barn at all, but... Um, I don't know, something from the mobile home, something from the new home. And it's great. That's, uh, that's Grover's toy octopus over there. And as I say, she's great now. She'll sleep for the night. She had a great, great day of running around. And uh, and like the goats are just, well, they're, they're down the other field now, but they're like two minutes away, which is fantastic as well. So it really is a great... A great thing. I'll be putting up. Thank you to all the people who gave to the GoFundMe page, which really made a difference for all this. I couldn't have done the road, the planning, um, getting it in, and all those kind of things, and all the trimmings. You know, there was so much. Uh, when you're doing a project like this, everywhere you turn, you're paying money. And um, it was fantastic. You know, it really was good. So we shall say good night. I'll talk to you tomorrow at 10, 10 a.m. Uh, we'll have a late, late morning and um, have a lovely evening. I'm going to have a, yet another cup of tea out of that lovely purple kettle. And we'll see you in the morning. Yarn in the barn next week, next weekend, next Saturday. And shall be talking to you in the mornings anyway, around 20 past eight. That might change. It might even have to be a little bit earlier because there's a lot of crack with um work now as well there's there's projects coming in it's amazing uh, again like buses nothing for ages and next thing they just all pull up in the one go but this is not where you pick one bus but you have one bus and you have a leg on one bus and another leg and another bus and a hand and another bus and your head is stuck in the other bus and you have a thumb and you kind of <laughs> try to reach over to get another bus as well but anyway it'll all work out in the end timetables timetables this september is the month of crazy timetables slan anish gakdena grev mahagodarfad thank you so much for all the lovely messages grev mahagrev and just know that i'm oh and i sleep so well as well i sleep really well because the the bed above in the old house had broken Ah, uh, hi, Antoinette. Good morning, their father. Ah, lovely. Good morning. But we on Laba Brishta, the bread had uh, the bed had broken and it was kind of I was sleeping on a slant, so it's lovely to be in a straight bed again, <laughs> a level bed. <laughs> okay, Slan and Ish, Captain. Good morning, their father. Slan and Ish.